The topic for today uh, is serverless testing. Um, so I'm pretty sure that you guys have done a really lot of testing yourself uh, of uh, mountain applications. Uh, so typically when you do the testing, typically you use you Selenium, right? Um, <clears throat> or TestBench if you're lucky. If you're not, then you just have to use So how many of you guys actually did write the Selenium test? Okay, quite a lot. How many of you guys actually enjoyed the experience? Okay, I didn't. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's horrible. Uh, a lot of expats always breaking when the application changes or something. So, yeah, the experience is really bad for me. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong, the test bench is really, really a nice experience. I, I like that. Uh, I like, you know, this ability to treat the components, the component and client side as well. It's just that there are some inherent uh, issues with uh, Selenium that um, that plague the whole experience. You know, it's it's so slow. I mean, the, the usual test, uh, the usual Selenium test takes at least three to five seconds to, to execute, and that's just the, the smallest one, right? The longer ones maybe take ten seconds or so, and it tends to fail randomly. Uh, it's just that maybe the browser loses the connection to the, uh, the, the, the Selenium driver loses the collection connection to the browser or the browser stops responding or it just um, uh, exec uh, executes uh, too, too slowly and then the test fails. Luckily with, uh, with uh, TestBench we have this wait for wilding call but with Selenium we don't and if there is you know something asynchronous going on in, in the server and basically, uh, wait for body reports like, yeah, body is ready, but the data isn't, so you get a test failure. And there are a couple of ways to treat that. I usually go with thread sleep, which is not that bad, not that good, as you can see. And still, the test still keeps failing randomly. Of course, um, you require a browser, right? Because Selenium uh, controls the browser, browser goes to the server, and I remember that uh, every time the tester installed the newer Firefox, it would just break, the Selenium driver stopped work, would stop working, and then we would have to downgrade the Firefox, or eventually we stayed on, at some older version, but uh, it didn't have the fixes, and it behaved differently than the newest versions, and so on and so on. Luckily, with Chrome, uh, that's so much better, uh, but still. Uh, but still, it's, it's a browser, uh, and uh, you can't just run it uh, on a, on a, a CI server easily because you, you need UI, you need to be not headless. Unless you both the, the, you know, use XF, XV, FB, or, or some, some other technology. Uh, so, yeah. And of course, the, brow uh, the, the uh, browser needs to connect somewhere, so you need the server to be up and running. Um, so typically you launch uh, JGOS uh, uh, with Maven in pre-integration or post-integration, uh, which shut down. And I remember that sometimes it wouldn't shut, shut down and it, it would just stay, stay like that. And basically because of that, it would then on the next run it would file to start and all this would just fail until somebody could went and uh, go and fix that. So, really annoying. What if there was a different way, you know, some other way to uh, to do the testing? Because typically the, the, the logic we want to test resides the server side, right? So what if we could execute those tests also server side? When we do, uh, when we create um, a Vadin application, we typically create views, populate it with Vadin component, yada yada, you know the you know the drill. So what if, you know? Just my view or whatever view we are talking about, it's just an object. What if we could actually instantiate it instead of volume and then, you know, just to take the, the, those uh, components outside of that view and assert in their state. So, for example, we could, we could um, populate a form and then click the save button and maybe then assert that the binder actually fail, uh, failed because there is a validation error. So we, we could actually examine this component that there is a validation error being shown and the save button actually didn't do anything. 
Good. And most importantly, what if we did that inside of a test method, right? So we, then we wouldn't have the necessity to, to, to actually run the server ourselves. So what if we use this approach for testing? So yeah, just do a new you new uh, new uh, my UI, nest the view inside that UI, and then we can examine it and test it. And that's exactly what uh, what we have been doing at Ericsson's. Uh, they have basically a uh, I don't know a battery of thousand tests and you uh, I don't know maybe or six hundred tests I remember and. Imagine that, that the test would run like five seconds each. So that's basically an hour. That's a full hour of, of, of battery that needs to be executed. And, and actually, the, the real world test in the Exxon is like maybe 2,000 tests. They are running much uh, longer. So it's like six hours. So it's like six hours. Uh, you commit and then you have to wait six hours until the, the commit is actually tested. Uh, so actually, let me show you how, how, mu how much faster this approach could be. Yeah. So now I'm going to launch the test battery. It's like 600 tests, and we can we can now see the test being run. And actually, I don't know if you can see that. So it's pretty fast. And that's it. So 600 tests in, in 11 seconds, and that's actually quite a slow computer. It's two times slower than any decent uh, <coughs> development uh, um, no, notebook that you have, and it's way slower than any desktop you, you, can, you have. And you can see that some of the tests are like, like in 12, 20 milliseconds. It's extremely fast. You can't achieve that with, with Selenium, right? And it's reliable. Basically, if you, if you, if you call a button.click, then it's kind of calls the, the click listeners and, and the, the, then it calls maybe the binder or something else, or maybe the navigate. But the point is that if you, um, it, it automatically waits until everything is done. So you don't have to wait yourself in, or in a browser or you, know, you, you don't have to create special logic to wait. Uh, of course, if we are doing asynchronous fetching, then maybe with some kind of executor, we can uh, hook into that executor and wait until everything is fetched, and then only resume the testing. Uh, this can be run headless. This doesn't be, uh, this doesn't run any browser, so you know, no, no need for the uh, for for uh, the UI. So you can run it in a Docker. You can run it in a uh, in a any Ubuntu server CI. You can run it in Travis uh, CI. For example, it's just a jury test, right? And I can't stress that enough. You can write a developer's machine without having the browser constantly popping up, you know, as, as the tests are run. Because it's fast, it's like 11 seconds, right? And even faster on, on any decent CI machine. It can be run frequently after every commit. You can actually uh, hook it in to get it so that the test will run before the commit is actually accepted. And you can run just easy, just easily uh, from your IDE, right? Uh, so what I propose is um, we actually have some Selenium tests because uh, there are cases that you can't uh, reproduce with this server serverless testing, as I call it. Uh, for example, of course, there is no browser, so you can't test CSS, you can't test whether the page actually uh, loads and looks as, as desired. So there are some scenarios that you need Selenium for, but the majority, I mean, I, mean, I don't know, maybe 80% 80, 80 of the tests, we just try to test the server-side logic, right? So, uh, and we, we can do that server-side, we can kind of... Um, throw away the browser and, 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 and everything on the client and just do uh, the, the testing on the server side. Yeah, so it's not a silver bullet, of course, so you can't test uh, the actual how this is looking, uh, looks uh, in a browser. And it's kind of a synthetic because there is no browser, so um, it doesn't actually um, resemble the actual experience of the user. So as I as I as I told you, we can uh, 
run this thing serverless, from, actually from a JUnit test, and I, I will, uh, I'm going to show you that uh, right now. Um, let me just mention a couple of other advantages. You can uh, debug it easily, because it's, it's, it's just a JUnit test, right? So you don't have to kind of run the server and connect a debugger remotely to that server uh, on every test. So you can just press debug on, on a JUnit test and have it you know, running and, and, and stopping at the breakpoints, you know, and having, having run your, your logic of, of your application. So in order to, uh, well, calling just new my UI is actually not that easy. And it will actually throw open the exception immediately because the other session, for example, is missing. But if we provide enough environment for this kind of approach, for example, we create a new button session and set it as a current, and it, will actually, it will actually work. So we just need to mock maybe valid a session, maybe um, valid request, valid response. The point is that maybe there are three classes that we need to instantiate and prepare, and after that, we're ready. Uh, typically, the server uh, connects to some kind of backend to fetch data. So uh, if we have a REST backend, then it's easy, right? Because typically, we use uh, those REST interfaces I like, you know, annotate it with get, so and retrofit maybe provides an implementation of the client for them. So we can just tell not to use the server, not to use retrofit, but of uh, the interface is provided by us moved in a way that it return the data that is uh, proper for the test scenario in, in question. <coughs> well, mocking database is a bit harder, but um, in the worst case, you can actually run database, for example, in a Docker uh, for the duration of the test. That's really, really fast, and you can kill it afterwards. <clears throat> so how would, how would uh, such a test would look like? Um, well, we need to prepare uh, the, the, the body environment, right? So there is this function, which is uh, actually really, really, really small, maybe 20 lines or so, which creates the body session and all uh, component or uh, all, all classes necessary. And then it will instantiate our UI and set it as a get current. And now we can actually use UI get current and set it, uh, set the contents to, to some view. And, and now we can actually test that view. And we can do that from from a genuine because uh, there is there is logic that actually will acquire what the UI log. So you are actually free to to, to the test itself. It will run with what the UI log has. So so you can do anything you want from those tests, right? So we can. Uh, we can, for example, um, find a grid in the current UI, check its data provider, we can, because we are server-side, right? And then uh, query its size. And if we prepare the database properly, so that we, we clear the database before every test, and then prepare uh, uh, in the test uh, itself, the database, that is, then we know what the, what the data, uh, the data source will look like. And it should return one, uh, if, if the grid shows all persons, that it should return just one row. And we can, of course, test, uh, we can add filters and then test that everything is filtered out and so on and so on. So, we can, for example, um, just look up some kind of a layout and, and expect that if there are three uh, children components. We can look at this field based on the caption. It's easy, right? Because we are server side, so we can we can just fetch UI get current, and it's typically a layout. We get children, so we traverse those children and, and their children and so on and so on until we find the start text field, maybe with a caption or maybe with some, some kind of identifier, and then we set its value. We can just call uh, the server side a set value, and it will the body will be tricky. And actually, the funny thing is that it doesn't need a browser to, to do that. So it just works because it's server side framework, right? Then we can we can uh, look at a button and click it, and then we can assert that uh, a view has been opened, a, a navigator uh, has navigated to a different view, and there is a grid with just one row. So I'm going to demo uh, how that uh, test could look like. Uh, here I have a, a, a very simple uh, body application. So it's just UI currently with no components. So I'm going to create this really hello world example with a simple single text field where you put your name and then click uh, a button and it will say like hello. So 
Yeah, this is Kotlin, so it may look unfamiliar, but uh, it's actually uh, really, really easy to, to, uh, to read. So I'm going to create a vertical layout, and inside of that, um, I'm going to have a text field, right? With a caption, say your name. And then we will have a label, which will show the output. And then we will have a button, right? Read. Which, when you click it, it will pull the text field. So, what this is, is this is just, uh, this is so-called uh, DSL, so domain specific language. And I used the DSL to, to actually allow us to create uh, a Vardin component tree. So this is kind of uh, this designer HTML, but this, this is uh, just a code. So it execute, executes really fast, way faster than you know parsing the HTML and then constructing the graph. Uh, so this is just, just a code, nothing more. And it looks better than the, the Java code, which is kind of flat. <coughs> well, nevertheless, uh, so I will have a name field and a label. <coughs> and I will set the, the label. <coughs> value equals hello. Name field value. Yeah, uh, it's actually a statically typed language. It just looks like a root. <coughs> Okay, I believe we are done, so we can just try to run it. <coughs> okay, so I hope you can see that, so uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and type my name in, in there and create Hello Market, right, so pretty simple application. Now to test this kind of application, uh, we will employ this, this uh, new kind of uh, a testing approach. So, so this is just a, a simple test. It doesn't inherit from anything. It's just a, sim uh, a simple class with you know with, with the line as we see, as we saw before. Uh, set up the testing environment, mock body session, or rather instantly body session, so that everything is ready. <laughs> so now. Uh, this, this function will make sure that uh, my UI is instantiated and, and set as current. So now, for example, we can uh, actually call the current, right? We held the body log, so we, can, we are free to do that. And we examine the content, and we know it's, it's a vertical layout. So we can simply assert that it has three children, right? Count. So I'm I'm, just, I'm I'm doing nothing more but using the the Vardin server side API. <coughs> uh, okay, good so far. And now I I'll go ahead and try to look up the text field. So I have this handy function like uh, find me a text field which has a caption of, say, the name. And I'm going to set its value to Martin, right? And now it should fail because uh, there is actually a text field, but it has a different caption. So uh, we would like to have a, some kind of a screenshot, right? So like, OK, so what, what the text field is actually there? And oops. There is a screenshot. Well, kind of. If you, if you stretch the meaning of the word uh, screenshot quite far, then this would probably qualify. But still, you know, we can see that there's a bit my UI which, which nests a vertical layout and a text field and a label and a button and so on. And the, the text field has a caption, say your name, so I'm going ahead and fix my test. And now it should work. So I'll go ahead and just uh, finish the test for you. So. Uh, so now uh, we need to click the button. Uh, we can't. We we, sh we shouldn't use uh, this built-in button click because, for example, it doesn't check whether the button is actually visible. 
So um, it will click it happily even though the user is actually unable to click it because it's been invisible. So I have created this uh, underscore click method which, which checks uh, a lot of things uh, and fails if, if the user can't click it actually. And then we know that the label, there is a label which will have a proper uh, value. Uh, so value and we expect it to be hello Martin. Uh, I know. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're right. Okay, now what? Oh. And now we should pass, hopefully, yeah. right? So, and, and it took like uh, two, 200 milliseconds to, to, to run. But that's uh, too slow. <coughs> and um, and well, why is that? It's simply because the JVM was not warm enough and uh, it, it hadn't those uh, VADIM components preloaded and you know, so, so it actually loaded those classes and, and that's why it took so long. So, if we have duplicate this test, then uh, in the second test, the, the JVM should be warm enough uh, to finish it rather quickly. So, five milliseconds. <laughs> Can you do that with Selenium? <laughs> so, I have to apologize, I'm using Kotlin uh, in the examples. Uh, the problem is that I tried to create this API in Java and uh, it's not as straightforward, let me tell you why. Uh, these lookup uh, uh, functions, uh, they uh, return, uh, it's, it's really handy, they return the button or the component uh, uh, um, per se, so that I can, you know, uh, so that, for example, this get text field will actually return the text field. So, yeah. And I can I can immediately uh, call set value and so on and so on. But what if uh, what if uh, we have a scenario that we, we need to look up a, a vertical layout first and then only a gate which is nested in the inside that vertical layout kind of nested uh, selects um, with Java um, if, if Java return uh, a text field immediately it doesn't have get right so you can't search inside of that. So we would either have to introduce uh, some kind of a static utility class which um, uh, uh, takes the text field or, or the components of first parameter, but that's actually really, really not, it's, it's not uh, fluent enough. If you, if you try to use that, it, it's, not, it's just uh, not fluent enough. Um, the other alternative is to, uh, for this get to actually return the component wrapper. So that which would have the get, get function and then you could kind of look up the descendants of that component. But it's actually annoying because every time you use this call, you would have to actually query the component and then assert this value and so on and so on. Luckily with Kotlin there is a third option, we have extension methods. So what I did, we actually, uh, I just uh, created an extension or function on every button component so we can actually call uh, it doesn't make sense on the text field, but we can actually call like, okay, and find me a, find me a grid. And this is actually, an, uh, but it doesn't have the, that, that function. But with extension methods, we can actually, uh, we can modify the code we don't own, so we can add, it, uh, add the method, kind of. <clears throat> and it's not just, you know, this get method. For example, I could, I could introduce um, this handy utility method like, uh, size so show me how many rows there are and uh, it's, it's, it's really easy so I, I have this data provider right and then I, I can call size on it and then I can simply use this method uh, on the grid as if it was defined on the grid itself so for example size right so you can so you, but with this mechanism you can you can add helpful um, testing testing stuff into a uh, lot of classes. Uh, now, okay, this is really simple example, uh, <laughs> but most of uh, most of the time we actually try to uh, connect to database, right? 
So, how would this uh, testing framework work with uh, uh, a database? Um, in here, uh, I have a really, really simple CRUD application. So uh, I'm going to show it to you. It's just a grid, and when you click a row, it, it will uh, show um, the details of that row. So CRUD, nothing, nothing special. No, so, big. So yeah. I'm not sure as you can see, so we have a, a bunch of rows and uh, yeah, and the buttons actually scrolled out, so I'm going to, yeah. It doesn't look very, very good, but it, it will do. So yeah, edit, we can edit the person and we can delete it and so on and so on. <laughs> so uh, uh, in here I'm, uh, oops, sorry, we need to increase the font. So, uh, in here, I'm using uh, uh, this uh, body on Kotlin framework, which is really simple. Uh, I, I'm going to use Spring, so I don't have to mock uh, or, or instant it or, or create some kind of uh, Spring testing testbed so that the test will work. I'm not using J2E, so I don't have to run some embedded um, J2 container so that I could, use, I could just use the database. Um, no, I'm actually what I'm what I'm using is just a simple, a simple DB method, which does nothing more than just to look up a JDBC connection from a pool and run run the selects on top of that. And there is a you can use JPA, of course, you can use Hibernate on top of, on top of that JDBC connection. But the point is that if you have this kind of simple setup, then you can actually call that DB method even from a test, right? I mean, why not? We have we have. Um, uh, we have this uh, service contact listener which runs uh, when the war file starts and basically what it does is just configures the database and using the in-memory H2 and then it runs the flyway to uh, populate the database with a proper structure. So I can run that from the test itself, right? So it's just a before class, context initialized, that will, that will configure the database and run uh, the flyway and after, after class I just kill it. Um, here, this is familiar, so uh, set up the value environment. Here we can uh, prepare for the test. Scroll it a bit. Oops. Yeah. So we can just delete all personnel and start afresh. And uh, in the test itself, we can actually create a testing data however we want and whatever we see fit. Uh, so this, this is just a create, uh, creating a per create a person and saving it into a database, and then we can actually use, for example, a value <coughs> navigator to navigate to graph. Vadi has everything necessary. It actually luckily doesn't need a browser to perform the navigator, so this will actually work. And navigator will actually uh, set the proper view into into the current UI. But we can of course assert that. So we can actually find a CRUD view. Yeah, this is just a view. Uh, it's typically extends vertical app, so it's a component itself. So, so we can look, look it up. And then we know there is a grid, and we expect the grid to have exactly one row. So um, I can run it. And luckily it's passed. So yeah, this time it took a bit longer uh, because there is this database and you know uh, uh, the whole environment set up. But the point is that it took like two, one second to, 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 to run those two tests. And there is a second text uh, I'm, I'm not going to show you because it, it's, it's a bit more complex. Uh, it clicks into the grid and fill, fills uh, out the form in, in a, in a pop-up or in a video. And then hits the save button and, and then asserts that the row is indeed in a database. So what, uh, what's good in, with this approach that we are kind of very close to the server, so we can actually assert on the state of the database. This is something we can't simply do uh, easily from, from a Selenium, because Selenium, we are, we, all we see is a browser. We don't have the access to the database, right? Unless we, we do remote calls or something. So, so in here, actually, we are 
uh, we are using the server code, so we, we can actually use the services themselves uh, as, as they are run by the code itself. So we, we, could, we can use those services from the test itself. So, uh, to sum it up, I would say that uh, in Ericsson, uh, uh, the guys are moving towards this kind of uh, um, testing. I'm hesitant to call it framework because it's like four classes or something. It's more about the way of, of doing the testing, right? So you could actually employ this way of testing in, in your project right now because you can just uh, steal those four classes and then you can you can use them and uh, you know you can use, you can use them in your in your project as well. Uh, if you are using Spring, then you would probably have to, to, to set up Spring testing or something. I'm not using Spring. If you are using jQuery, you would have to set up this uh, this container. Uh, if you if you don't, you are in luck because you can write this this kind of test really easily. So I guess that's all I have. So thank you for listening. <laughs>